So, who's ready to travel from home? If you subscribe to and follow the crew, you know our entire business is built on international travel. The coronavirus pandemic has disrupted everybody's life and has grounded us. However, we are also filmmakers, and that is something we can still do, even if we are locked inside. We've contacted our vast network of friends, family, and business associates around the world, and basically have asked them to do our job for us. We asked them to tell us what life is like in their corner of the world during this pandemic. So we're gonna take you on a journey. Take it away, Ben. So I have been in Australia for the last four weeks. Our lockdown is not as strong as some people. Basically, you're to work from home if you can. Our schools are still open, which has been a big point of contention because um, around the world, most schools have closed. If you walk around, you'll still find that uh, supermarkets have people frequenting them. We've put out uh, kind of social distancing markers so that when you queue up, you're not too close to people. The usual things have been removed from the uh, supermarket shelves. I think it's a common story around the world. Pasta, rice, tinned goods, frozen meats. Um, strangely enough though, the, the fresh produce, the fresh ingredients, all of that's still there. So uh, some nights we've been dining out on prawns and oysters. Um, while I don't know what everyone else is eating, having horrible like tinned food dinners. So I don't know kind of what's driving the panic on the packaged foods, but guys, there's fresh food out there. If you go for a walk, you'll find that a lot of playgrounds have been taped off and uh, like sporting areas have been shut down. Uh, as of a few days ago, you can't go out in more than uh, groups of two people. So that's what's happening in Australia, but let's go check out what's happening in the rest of the world. So buckle up, stay right where you are, and let's go to China. Our friend Jia Lang reports from China, where on the 4th of April, only a few days ago, they held the Qingming Festival, also known as the Tomb Sweeping Day. This is an important part of Chinese tradition, originating from the Tang Dynasty, where people pay their respects to their ancestors. On this day, the national flag was lowered to half-mast in China. People burnt incense and made paper offerings. They stopped all public entertainment, observed silence, and rang an alarm for three minutes to pay tribute to the 62 doctors and the thousands who have died during this pandemic. However, local governments are strictly limiting access to cemeteries amid concerns over the spread of the coronavirus, and so many abandoned construction sites not far from home have become an alternative to observing this Chinese cultural practice. Now we're going to take a quick hop over to Hong Kong, where our good friend Ryan Van Gorder is. It's been over a month and a half since he's seen his family. He's separated from him in Seattle. Hey, Ryan Van Gorder here in Hong Kong on Sunday, April 5th, perhaps. Somewhere in the beginning of April, we've lost track of time in our quarantining, although we're not forced to be home quarantined right now in Hong Kong. The rule is no more than four people congregating at any point in time. Bars are not serving alcohol, but people are out and about, as you'll be able to see here in central Hong Kong, Soho. Most people wearing face masks, fresh off of a mountain bike. People are still getting outside, exercising. There's a lot of activity in the city. Any public places are canceled, parks, barbecues, any other stuff that's going on um, with regards to picnics and, and people doing social gatherings pretty much canceled and or closed off. But life still goes on in Hong Kong. Espresso time. Espresso. Classic Hong Kong espresso. Now let's head over to the Philippines where our friend Wes lives with his family in a remote village. Well, I'm currently waiting for the rest of the kids to get together. It's probably at least 15, 16, 17 of them. And I decided to do a project called the Monkey Bridge. They program where the children uh, here in the village will get a chance to talk to the children in the U.S. and try to match them up grade-wise and, and gender-wise. You know, maybe let them talk for maybe 10 or 15 minutes uh, via online. I need your support on this, and uh, there's going to be a lot of kids who <clears throat> are going to be home because of the coronavirus, and it's affecting the world, and it's even affecting the kids here. And so to let them know that, hey, we're all in this together. This is a world issue. Your support is great. Uh, I'd like to be able to pair some people up, uh, and it would give some, the kids something to look forward to. They can study a remote culture. Uh, the kids here can learn a little bit of English. 
two to three weeks of uh, social isolation, but doesn't mean that we can't make the best of it. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. <laughs> From here we head to Thailand, where some friends of ours provide an insight to day-to-day -day life. So here is the supermarket around my neighborhood. You can do grocery shopping as normal, but right now we are under lockdown from 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. in the morning. See that there are measures in place before you enter the supermarket. There's a temperature measurement. So in terms of general daily life, you can see I have to wear masks. But, and I have been working from home for two weeks now. There's no shortage on um, any ingredients. What we are doing in our spare time. Picking mangoes from the tree. Oops, here come mango. Thank you. This is what the situation like around my house. So people still go out, but just almost everyone wear mask. This is my friend. Even though she stay at home, she still wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> These are the two that are more happy that more humans are at home. <laughs> You know the crew have been to India a few times and so have made a lot of friends here. Let's check in on a few of them in the north of the country. Namaste, I'm Dimple Kamra, sending greetings from Gone Fishing Cottages, Deethan, India. I'm in a small mountain village in the state of Himachal, the land of the Himalayas. I honestly never thought that India could or would impose a lockdown. And boy, were we caught off guard. My husband Rupi was supposed to join me just a day before the country came to a standstill. Presently, we are in the middle of a 21-day lockdown. My aged parents are alone in Chandigarh and my children are in Canada. This lockdown in India is extremely strict. There is restriction of movement and you cannot venture out unless it's an emergency or you have a valid pass. The first few days of the lockdown were terrifying. I felt trapped and helpless. There is an acute shortage of masks not only here, but all over the country. So we've decided to make these cloth masks at home and we are planning to distribute this to the local health workers and the local people. Sending all of you the best wishes from here, stay in, stay safe, and a big thank you, especially to all those brave health workers who are doing a fabulous job and putting their lives at risk for the rest of us. So the curfew in our place is relaxed from 10 to 1 in the morning. This is our post-breakfast walk time. Jayati and I step out. So out with the cattle. Village life goes on. There's the little poly houses to be tended, the seedlings to be planted, and there, housework to be done. So our village shop is kind of quiet today. Normally there are a few people. This is one of the three guest houses and they're all shuttered and locked. All three. Completely closed. We now head into the small landlocked Central Asian country of Kyrgyzstan, where life is a bit different from the last time I visited while I was on a backcountry ski trip. Скажите, пожалуйста, где мне взять пропуск? На советском тактогула возьмете там. Советская тактогула это там. Да. Как я туда должен попасть? А это что делали? Не важно, что я до этого делал. Я же не в тюрьме нахожусь. Я знаю. Но я не могу. Let's head over to Europe, where they've suffered greatly. We're going to head up to Sweden and hear from our good friend Anders Strand. Hi, greetings from northern part of Sweden. Up here it's pretty calm, but uh, it's more severe in our big capital uh, and it's spreading far worse now within the couple, next couple of weeks. But as you all 
have been reading about the Swedish experiment. We are uh, very good at social distancing. Our family has uh, utilized self-isolation now for almost uh, three to four weeks. I kind of have a similarity to the Bill Murray film Groundhog Day. I'm on parental leave now for the whole year, so uh, like a stay-at-home dad. I'm taking care of our 10-month-old ten, ten baby. We eat breakfast and then we explore uh, on the floor, we explore the apartment, uh, we play games. We go running almost every day, 8 to 10 miles, just to get out, to get some fresh air. They say that it's gonna hit us pretty hard here in the next 3 or 4 weeks, so we'll just continue doing what we do. You don't see as many face masks around here yet. Uh, we are not on any lockdown. We are pretty pretty calm right now and we trust in this Swedish experiment. I hope it's all going well for all, everyone and uh, stay safe out there. Peace. Heading south, we check out what's happening with a couple of my friends in France. Hi everyone, so my name is Flavie and I live in France, uh, in the city of Lyon. Um, actually at the moment in France everyone's been inside their house for about three weeks now. Most of the people here in France are working from their house but there's a lot of people who can't do that so some of them are still going to work. We are not really allowed to go outside. If we go outside it's only to go food shopping or to go to the drugstores. We're not allowed to be outside for more than an hour and it needs to be like at one kilometer from your house. So uh, we have to put the gloves on and uh, we have also to put the mask on. So this is a grocery store, like kind of a supermarket here in France. So here is what we bought. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to go outside again and having fun and seeing friends and doing sports outside. Really want to say I know that we're all together in this and really hoping to see everyone gathered again together. See you soon. Now we're going to touch down on our fourth continent. Heidi Muller is going to take us through her slice of life in South Africa. Hi guys, it's Heidi Muller, based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Some of you will know us from uh, as the race directors for Expedition Africa, but today we were supposed to start our Expedition Africa race, Lesotho. So it is quite a quite a sad day today. I think everybody else in the world, all the race directors and everybody feels the same. There is just no financial assistance for us. There's a saying, a boer maak a plan. It's a saying that you just must make a plan. They locked down Africa quite quickly, so let's hope for the good in this whole exercise and in a few months time it will be over. This is what it is and stay positive and just motivate everybody to look after themselves, stay healthy, stay at home and yeah. Just uh, spreading the love to everybody and the support to everyone. Heading to South America now, we touch base with Santiago, another great adventure racing friend of ours. Hi, my name is Santiago Lopez and I am uh, an adventure race organizer. Here in Ecuador, we have uh, about uh, 3,000 cases almost. And um, uh, the lockdown is uh, very strict. There are only two days in the week that I can use to go out and uh, get some food for the family. Um, the curfew starts uh, at 2 p.m. until 5 a.m. in the morning, so I need to go now and get some food. A little bit of movement here in Kumbaya. This is part of uh, the city of Quito in Ecuador. The real problem with this virus is that you have a lot of people that depend on their jobs and uh, now they cannot work. Then it's gonna be a real, really big problem because uh, our economy is very fragile. For us as adventure race organizers, our business is in danger now because uh, we cannot organize any event. But we, we just have to, to stay positive, you know, be with the family, be safe. For us as uh, adventure race organizers, we just believe that the the wilderness out there is gonna be in much better shape. The playground that we we used to know is gonna be in much, much more better shape. And finally landing on our sixth continent, where my family are witnessing a suffering New York. Hi! Hey, so 
so we're reporting from East Chester, New York, about 40 minutes um, north of New York City. And we have been on lockdown for, this is our fourth week, I think. Here's uh, the kids' school, which has been shut down. And over here behind me is Trader Joe's, which is shut down. And it's closed yeah. because there was um, an employee death due to COVID, unfortunately. And usually at Trader Joe's, there's like on the lines, there are like people are like this because they can't be together. Right, social like distancing that. is everywhere and being reinforced. Our governor Cuomo has said that they have started fining a thousand dollars for non social distancing. And here we're printing out um, online schoolwork for the third grader, and we have the kindergartner who's unclear of what is your question? What does this? I've already brought. Oh, because it cut it off. Yeah, out. Out. Uh, yeah. So far, it's it's going amazingly well here um, this morning. So, anyway. And now heading to sunny LA, where a couple of my friends are dealing with a new world. I'm here outside of Whole Foods. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I've been to a major grocery store. I'm a little nervous because there's already a line out the door. Uh, but let's see what I'm dealing with. Why can't I find heavy cream in any of the stores? Why is that a thing everyone needs like a shit ton of? But how is there not a shortage on chocolate? I don't understand. You know, uh, dating during the pandemic is kind of the worst it's ever been. I mean, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's on online, everybody's, uh, Everybody's on dating apps, you know, uh, single people, married people who are stuck at home and just kind of sick of each other. Uh, but but no, nobody wants to meet up. And then the dating apps are constantly, they're, they're trying to, they're like, oh, you know, uh, go, on a, go on a cyber date or Skype or whatever. And nobody wants to do that. You know, everybody was kind of excited in a way because they thought, you know, I'd, I'd have more time to like pursue projects. I could play board games or whatever, but like, nobody wants to do that either, so. I'll go outside uh, uh, every every few days or once a week or so, um, and you know I'll, I'll see the outside. It's still there. Uh. And our final stop takes us to Seattle, USA, where Eric. Well, over to you, Eric. I'm in Seattle, and life here has receded rather quickly as we were asked to stay home, and it progressed from there. The streets and the commute cleared quickly here in Seattle. And I caught up with my friend Martin, who's an essential employee participating in the process of developing a COVID-19 vaccine. We're, uh, you know, nonprofit uh, NGO, so most of our money is in the pipeline already uh, from grants and uh, funders like Gates Foundation. So uh, I think we're okay for now. The very first Starbucks ever was still open but Pike Place Market was closed. They shut down international travel, unfortunately for us, six days before we were supposed to be in India for work. We have no revenue, no work now, so we have to get industrious. Then the school shut down, and I had to begin homeschooling my children. I feel I should get a bigger stimulus check for this. Then they indefinitely canceled school, which essentially canceled my daughter's senior year, which was very unfortunate. I immediately started applying to all the government assistant programs that are said to be out there. I couldn't get anyone on the phone, the websites were crashing, and I've yet to receive anything, like most Americans. It got close to home when they started managing our micro-movements, for instance in the grocery store where they tried to give directional traffic. Now as you guys know, I don't follow rules too well and now my wife doesn't let me go to the grocery store. But the beaches and parks were still open, so I began to run and exercise more. I built a garden with the kids for the long haul, preparing for the breakdown of the food supply chain and society in general. Then there were the hoarders. They started hoarding everything, flour, toilet paper. Again, trying to be prepared, I decided we'd start making our own toilet paper out of grass clipping. It wasn't long though before they didn't want people aggregating even in groups of four or five, and they shut down the beaches. I mean, literally had helicopter patrols, surveillance vehicles, ground troops. What are you doing? We're demonstrating the six foot dis distance. That we're oh, I just keep. closed in on you, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you need the physical demonstration. Luckily, we still have technology, and Viv and I have been able to transfer the development of film and television into Zoom meetings. 
It's not the same, but we're getting it done. We still have it good, however. We have a house over our head, we have food, we have copious amounts of wine, and we still get to get out for walks. So make the best of it out there with your family and those around you you interact with, and start making some big sacrifices for others so you and I can truly say we're all in this together. So thanks so much for traveling with the crew. We really appreciate having you on board. Uh, enough of the ridiculous travel puns. Big shout out and thank you to everybody who contributed to this video. We really thank you for taking the time out of your day and sharing some of your thoughts about what's going on in your corner of the world. It's obviously made this video possible. We're gonna produce another episode of Armchair Travel because footage is coming in from around the world while you're watching this video the Democratic Republic of the Congo, other parts of India, Yemen, Costa Rica. We'd like to extend this invite to film yourself to our YouTube channel and viewers. If you're sitting somewhere in the world we haven't covered yet or have an interesting story, please reach out to us. We'll put our email below in the description box and you can find it on our website at oneopen.tv. Please send us interesting video clips from your slice of life. We'll edit them down. Get us about one to three minutes of clips Make sure not only to show us, but tell us. You can shoot it on your iPhone, whatever you have. And finally, as I always do, I'd like to encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. We have a wonderful online community on our YouTube channel, and I'm particularly now, more than ever, I think it's important that we stay connected. So stay safe, stay indoors, and travel online.